I want to talk a little bit about what this prevention fund does and how it impacts Ohioans. So as Dale said, the Affordable Care Act created the Prevention and Public Health Fund, which is a mandatory funding stream to support public health infrastructure and programs at the local, state, and national level. And the fund has a very specific mandate, and you can find it um, in, in the ACA, and it says specifically the fund's mandate is to provide for expanded and sustained national investment in prevention and public health programs to improve health and help restrain the rate of growth in private and public health care costs. As you all remember, when the ACA was being debated at the national level, not only was it a debate about access, there was a very um, specific and kind of tenuous debate around how to contain health costs. And that's where this fund came in, because there was agreement that prevention would help contain those costs. And so that's why, as Dale said, that uh, there could be potentially be short-term savings. That's why we believe this is so short-sighted, because this fund was the fund that was set up to contain health care costs on into the future. So again, specifically, the fund assists local, state, and national organizations with things like breast and cervical cancer screenings, chronic disease prevention and emergency response to disease outbreaks, nutrition, um, services and improved access to health care, workforce development and training programs, primary care residencies, research and data collection. And the ACA allocated about $18.75 billion to fund all of this between 2010 and 2022. And focusing prevention efforts on chronic afflictions like heart disease, cancer, diabetes is crucial to this cost control since such diseases are responsible for 7 out of 10 deaths and account for nearly 75% of the nation's health spending. So clearly, stopping these things before they get out of control and cost more is a wise investment. And it's cheaper to take care of them on the front end as opposed to when it gets to the point where expensive treatment is needed. And specifically in Ohio, this fund has, um, this fund has awarded Ohio more than $17 million since 2010. Um, and they go to various different groups throughout Ohio that is doing some of these prevention type screenings, um, doing research. Um, a lot of the funds go to uh, efforts to research and prevent cancer. And as a result, over 2 million Ohioans have received expanded prevention services, including 797,000 women and 559,000 children and 782,000 men. And so since women and children account for well over 1.4 million of the 2 million Ohioans receiving services, they would disproportionately be impacted by terminating the prevention fund. And it's particularly shameful to pit much needed affordable student loans against much needed affordable health care or pitting college students against Ohioans seeking prevention services, especially when they're primarily women and children. And Ohio needs an educated workforce. We need our students to go to college, but it's bizarre to suggest that Ohio will somehow be better off if we make college more affordable on one end and then gut chronic disease prevention on the other. And again, you know, just to, to say it again, these are immunization programs. These are residencies. Um, these are teen pregnancy prevention programs, tobacco use uh, cessation programs. And Ohio should be particularly concerned about zeroing out this fund at the federal level, and here's why. Ohio continues to be at the bottom of the pack in public health spending, unfortunately. The $15.13 per capita that we spend each year on public health places us at 41st in the nation. And then the additional $13.96 per person that we receive from the CDC ranks us dead last among the states. And the $17.27 we get per person from HRSA ranks us 39th out of 50. So not only does abandoning the prevention service, or prevention efforts cost us more money, but because of, of our lack of investment, we see our health stats um, decreasing as a result. Ohio ranks near the bottom in a lot of these disease categories that the prevention fund is targeting. 
For example, Ohio ranks 47th, the third worst among 50 states for breast and cervical deaths, 46th in smoking rates, 40th in lung cancer, 41st in mental health indicators, 42nd in both heart disease and diabetes. And then in 2010, Ohio ranked 39th in child immunizations among those children 19 to 35 months of age. So clearly this is very short-sighted and Ohio college students and their families are already swimming in debt and can't afford to see their loan interest rates double. But it's cynical politics and poor public policy to insist that the only way to help college students is by hurting the health of women and children. Nor do the budget numbers suggest that it's necessary. Because if keeping interest rates from doubling costs $6 billion, then why would the House Republicans insist on cutting the full $12 billion? If stopping illness before it starts is cheaper than treatment, so why are Republicans targeting an illness prevention fund that provides services to over 2 million Ohioans? Unfortunately, the House Republican bill is not about saving money. It's, not, it, it, it's instead about the Republican obsession with undoing health care reform. And it's also about their willingness to say and do anything to preserve tax breaks for the wealthiest Americans, even if it comes at the expense of those who truly need help. So that's a review of the report, the Ohio-specific findings. Um, I'd like to go ahead and ask our surrogates to say a few words before we answer questions uh, about the report, and then maybe you can ask uh, all of us questions. And our first surrogate happens to be on the phone calling in from Cleveland. Um, Dr. Peter DeGolia is a family physician, a geriatrician. He's also a professor of uh, family medicine at Case Western Reserve University. He's someone who studied the ACA, and he will be able to give us um, a provider's perspective on um, why this, this prevention son, uh, fund is so important. So, Dr. Begolia, would you go ahead and uh, speak to the issue, please? Sure. Thanks for having me. Uh, Peter Begolia here in Cleveland. Um, I, have to, I want to start off by just sharing a personal note, and that is, without the student funds, I couldn't have gone to medical school. It's, they've been critical for me. I, I had $120,000 in debt after I graduated from medical school. That was relatively low because I had student loans going through medical school, and then I went into the National Health Service Corps, uh, and the new health care law actually boosts the National Health Service Corps to help uh, students like me pay off my debt. It seems to me this is a straw man situation, setting student loans up against preventive health. One of the things that we know is that an ounce of prevention really does save a pound of cure. And, and uh, we, it's not an either or situation. Preventive services have benefited individuals. So I'd like to really respond directly to this uh, a statement that's been made in the past that not a dime of preventive funds have gone to Ohioans or anyone else uh, in the U.S. That's actually not true. I can tell you about my patient, Gloria, uh, who has a strong family history of breast cancer. She would not get mammograms uh, before the new health care law because she could not afford the copay associated with a mammogram. With the new law and the availability of prevention funds to help pay for uh, preventive services without a copay, she went ahead, she had a mammogram, she was found to have an abnormal nodule, she went through the workup and removal of the nodule, and she's now uh, not with breast cancer. She's been successfully treated, and she has saved uh, both the quality of her life is far better than it would have been had she not uh, been found to have cancer and allowed cancer to grow and develop, and the cost savings to all of us, and certainly to, to her health care plan, has been substantial because she's avoided uh, extensive chemotherapy, surgeries, etc. I can tell you about children, uh, as well as frail elders, who are able to get the pneumococcal vaccination now with no copay associated with it. We know that pneumococcal disease affects all age groups, although the elderly and immunocompromised in children, uh, young infants, are at highest risk for infection. I can speak directly to uh, the elderly, which is my uh, specialty area. Uh, 
pneumococcal vaccination, uh, uh, pneumococcal disease causes about 30 to 40 percent of community acquired uh, pneumonia resulting in hospitalization for older adults. This vaccination helps prevent a substantial number of those individuals developing pneumonia, not requiring hospitalization. So we're, we're saving ourselves really quite a large uh, amount of money. So it, it's not an either or. Uh, preventive services and the access to prevention with no copay has actually allowed uh, millions of individuals, 1.4 million women and children have already benefited from this fund. 2. Uh, 1.2 million seniors with Medicare in Ohio have received preventive services just in 2011. And if you look at the impact of having preventive services in the new health law, 45 million Americans which includes 2.4 million Ohioans with private insurance have also gained preventive service coverage with no cost sharing as a result of this provision in the new health care law. This is something Americans really like and we're not willing to accept a trade-off between student loans and preventive services.